Welcome back to the Big Tire Garage. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different than any other video that we've ever put on the channel. What this video is going to be about is we're going to explain the process for determining the budget for everyone's vehicle that participated in the Onyx Build Series Challenge, as well as how some of the rules got put into place. And I have in this folder the actual budget that was agreed upon by all the competitors on that day in Moab when they finally showed up with their finished vehicles. And I'm going to share that with you at the end of this video. <laughs> This video is sponsored by Ridge. Now you can turn loose keys like this into something cool like this with the Ridge key case. And there's no better time to clean up your key game than right now because Ridge has partnered with Hennessy for their summer sweepstakes. Ridge and Hennessy have teamed up and you have the chance to win a Hennessy Bronco Velociraptor or $75,000 in cash. You can enter for free at their websites and you will get one bonus entry for every dollar you spend. Plus, if you use my code BIGTIRE, you'll get 10% off and an additional 10 entries. The Ridge key case holds between one and six keys and it will keep them from rattling around in your pocket. Plus, they store discreetly and slim styled just like the Ridge wallet. Plus, it looks a lot better than that carabiner you've been clipping on your belt loop since high school, let's be honest. So go ahead, get yourself a Ridge key case and you can turn your stylish new accessory into this. Now, if you haven't watched the Onyx Build Series Challenge, you definitely should. It's a very good series. Our team is super proud of putting that together for Onyx Off-Road. I was brought on along with my video team very early on in the process. Uh, Onyx had already decided that they were going to do some type of budget build and some type of challenge with the vehicles, but they really kind of hadn't flushed it out quite yet. And the, when we came in and I came in as basically the host of the series and the producer, we kind of sat down with them and came up with an incredibly good plan. If you haven't watched the series, you definitely should. I'll put a link to it up here somewhere. Uh, it's a great series. Uh, the competitors did an amazing job. They had a great attitude throughout the entire thing. Uh, so let's start right at the beginning. So we're going to talk about the budget of $15,000. Now, uh, that budget was not decided on by myself. That budget was already in place when we came in and started to basically flush out the idea of this build series. Um, I personally think $15,000 is not enough to build a vehicle if you are going to be buying all brand new parts and pieces. Um, I have built over 100 hardcore off-road vehicles of all different shapes and sizes, from budget builds all the way up to multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars custom high-end off-road race vehicles, as well as custom, just basically custom 4x4 vehicles that are worth six figures plus. Um, and so I know what the parts are worth, I know how much time it takes, and I consider myself a pretty good evaluator of how much money you need to build something. Now, that being said, could you build these vehicles for $15,000 if you include the price of everything? Yeah, you probably could. But it wouldn't be all brand new parts and pieces. You wouldn't be able to go out and buy brand new tires, brand new wheels, brand new axle shafts, brand new lockers, brand new suspension, because you just eat up that budget. You'd be looking for a lot of used stuff. So when we all arrived in Moab, Utah for the very first uh, part of the challenge, which was stock vehicles up Moab Rim, we made the decision then that we were going to do a couple things with the budget. So number one, it was $15,000 and that included the price of buying the vehicle. So that was kind of putting them behind the eight ball right away. Um, we certainly didn't want anybody to skimp on safety items uh, that they are going to need to have to participate in Ultimate Adventure. There's a lot of things you have to have to participate in UA that maybe you might not put in your trail rig because you might not want to have it there because of the cost of trying to build something on a budget. Example, uh, VHF radios. You have to have that to go on Ultimate Adventure, uh, but you don't necessarily have to have that in your trail rig. 
So the decision was made early on that what we're going to do is we're going to remove any item that is required by Ultimate Adventure uh, from the budget. And that opened up sort of a can of worms, but it was a can of worms that the smart competitors picked up on right away. Uh, if you read the Ultimate Adventure rules, it clearly states that you must have locking differentials front and rear. Well, that means you're going to have to have a locker. So that means that you don't have to buy the locker or you have to install the locker in your project, but you didn't have to include it in your budget. Things like that. There was a lot of sort of gray area in that process as well that allowed these guys to build these vehicles underneath that $15,000 cap. And we're going to talk about those things that would have been added in when we talk about each individual vehicle budget. The decision was made early on by the competitors, not by me, that free parts were not going to be allowed, which I agreed with. I think that's right, because for those of you who follow along this world of YouTube, you know uh, that the reality is that most of these guys, and myself included, we get stuff for free. We get stuff in exchange for exposure uh, in our different worlds. And so would it be fair for somebody to be able to say, oh, I got a free crate engine, or oh, I got a free this, or a free that? Well, no, we decided that was not going to happen. So we came up with a plan for that, and the plan was very simple. Any part that you got for free or that you had laying around, you had to put a dollar value on it. But you didn't get to put that dollar value on it. We started an email chain with all the competitors, and we said, this is what's going to happen. You're going to find a used part or have a used part laying around and you're going to want to use it. You are going to email everyone involved in the competition and everyone involved in the competition, they, your competitors will assess the price for that part. And this email grew and grew and grew as the competition went on. A uh, perfect example, Nate used a couple of used Corbo suspension seats. I think a value of maybe $100 was placed on that by Colt uh, in the email chain and everyone agreed with that. Um, uh, Rudy wanted a set of wanted to use a set of used 17-inch uh, steel bead locks. Uh, he wanted a value, I think, of $100, but nobody else could find steel bead locks for sale for $100, and so an agreed upon value, I believe, was $500 at the end of the day. And so that's how we did it. We wanted to make sure the competitors were not just, you know, using free parts whenever they could. Uh, the other sort of crux in this competition were the sponsors. You know, there's sponsors in these competitions, as I'm sure you figured out by now, and those sponsors want to have their products used. And certainly, if you're building a vehicle on a budget, you're probably not going to throw a very high dollar set of off-road lights on it. You might not even need it. Yeah, they're nice to have, but you don't want it to soak up a lot of your budget. So we made the decision also as a group that any item that was not improving the vehicle's off-road performance but was supplied by an elite sponsor would not go against the budget. And that got real gray later on, and we'll explain that uh, when we get into talking about each individual budget. So that's how the competition started. I felt very comfortable at that point knowing that $15,000 and they could remove things like the roll, tubing for the roll cage, the uh, uh, safety items like seat belts, lockers front and rear. There's a lot of things that they could take out of that budget. I felt they were going to be right there at that $15,000 mark. And a couple of them were. Uh, so that was, that, those were the rules that were put in place. Now, the other thing that came up quite often from the challengers was they didn't want this to just be a vote slash popularity contest. You got to remember some of these uh, challengers have bigger YouTube channels than the other ones and the people who were involved in this didn't want this just to be a, I'm more popular than you. So they wanted some sort of vote addition or subtraction device that would allow them to either earn votes or lose votes during the competition to see whose vehicle was the best. And that's where we put the challenge in, challenges in place. And I've read through the YouTube comments. I know some of you think the challenges were silly, but in my mind, uh, the person who developed those challenges was me. And I think the challenges were very fair for all competitors. I think they were uh, equal across the board. Everyone had a chance to do well in them and everyone had a chance to pick up a lot of votes in the competition. And most importantly, they were representative of the things that you're actually going to have to do if you're going to go on a trip like Ultimate Adventure. I've been on Ultimate Adventure multiple times. You are going to have to 
remove your drive shaft and install the spare shaft. And it's not going to be in a parking lot controlled environment. It's not going to be fun. Uh, you are going to have to possibly replace a shock absorber or some type of uh, item on your vehicle. Uh, one hand tied behind the back, well, that's just because it's our job to make it entertaining for everyone involved. And everyone at the end of the day, I think, would say that they also thought the competitions were stupid when they did it. But now once they've watched the show, I think they realize that it was fun. And all the competitors had a great uh, attitude for all the competitions. I'll give them credits for that. Nobody was complaining about it. They realized that, hey, this is all part of it. And, you know, they knew that at the end of the day, it was going to make a fun video. So that was where the competition came into play. Believe it or not, even up until the very end, until like a few weeks before we were leaving for the trip, the vote count was close enough that if Nate and Dave had won all the competitions and if they had won the last competition, which was the big one, uh, they would have picked up enough votes to close the gap to make it feasible for them to still win a trip on, on UA. But what happened right before we left for the trip is a bleeping Jeep and Rad Charger, they just took off. And it was, you know, multiple thousands of votes. And I think in the end, by the time we left on the trip, they were in the 40,000 uh, votes and Nate was still stuck around 15,000. So he knew he wasn't, he wasn't gonna catch up no matter what. So uh, at the end of the day, we know who won. Um, the person who won, uh, I think it, it was fair. And I think everyone was able to win or lose votes equally across all the challenges during the event. And at the end of the day, really, it, it, it was just fun. That's all that it was. Okay. So now it's time for the big, big question. This has probably been the most discussed item on all the channels. Every channel has posted a video about their particular project. And then in the comment section, there's a lot of back and forth about the budgets on the vehicles. So what I have in this folder is the actual budget for each vehicle. And I will read it off to you and tell you exactly how it worked. So what we did first was A, I had every competitor send me a complete breakdown of every single part that was on the vehicle. They were just give it to me either an Excel spreadsheet or type it up in a Word document. I then went through and watched all of their build videos to make sure they didn't miss anything. Then when we were at the event, what we did is we had the two teams, the two challenging teams evaluate the budget and then assign a new number. So for instance, on here, uh, we'll get to we get there, but Nate had on here a snorkel. Uh, in his video, he mentions the fact that he was going to go over budget by installing the snorkel top, but the snorkel top was not on his budget when he gave it to me. So when everyone reviewed it, I made sure to mention that and they went back and looked and sure enough, the snorkel top was on there. So they added it into the budget. So essentially what happened is Nate gave Rudy and Bleepin and Colt his budget and they went through his truck with a fine tooth comb. And if they saw something they disagreed with, they simply scratched it out, wrote a new amount in its place that everyone agreed to. On the, on the video, this took 20 seconds. In real life, this took four hours of time for everyone to basically comb through each other's budgets. So here is what Nate spent on the Land Cruiser. And I'm going to go through this pretty fast. So here we go. Land Cruiser was $4,000. Paint and body, $650. Tires were $500. Uh, B grip wheels, 1,017. Seats uh, they ended up being, uh, I think, cold and I ended up giving them for free. Uh, Land Cruiser Grill, 186. Headlights, 186.95. Fox shocks, 5.95 and, and 40, 94 cents. One and a quarter inch lift kit, $198. RCV axle shafts front, 1,049. RCV axle shafts rear, 1,099. Yukon ring and pinion plus install kit, $1,274.90. ARP head studs, oh, hub studs, sorry. Uh, 179.98 wheel adapters 279.90 snorkel 94.98 two inches of tube 100 or two inch tube 24 feet 146.40 inch and three quarter tube 258.72 now that was the tubing for sliders bumpers items like that that did not include his roll cage uh, plate steel 17 bucks a Barnes uh, steering kit 314 uh, hardware 21.22 a hitch pin 8.52 vinyl for the bottom four bucks 
8 gauge switch panel, $123. Wiring in a 12 volt socket, $31.99 and $475 for exhaust. Now, uh, the adjustments that were made, uh, the tires, the group decided 500 was too low. They moved it up to 700 and his snorkel top at 204 means that Nate's vehicle cost $13,618. Now, the items that obviously are not in there that are required for Ultimate Adventure are things like front and rear ARB air lockers. That is easily an additional $2,000. A compressor for those uh, uh um, air lockers to operate is another five six hundred dollars um, on his bead grip wheels uh, he said four because there is a requirement to carry a full-size spare so that's a free wheel and tire that's probably another five hundred dollars uh, he didn't do transfer case gears oh winch Another thing that I require by Ultimate Adventure is a winch. You put a worn winch on there, that's $700. So you can see those items would have easily put him over the $15,000 budget. But because we removed those items that are required by Ultimate Adventure, he came in at $13,618. $13,618. He had planned to do transfer case gears, but he did not do them. And those gears were an additional, I think they were right around maybe $1,500, but he didn't put them in. So he ended up being well under budget and therefore got a reward for being under budget. He got extra votes and we'll talk about that when we get to the end. So that is how much it cost to build Nate's vehicle. So right there, I'm gonna say $13,000 was the cost for the competition. True cost for that vehicle, I'm honestly gonna say closer to $17,000, $18,000 if we remove everything that we took out from Ultimate Adventure. Okay, now let's move on to Team Bleepin' Jeep. Team, team Bleepin' Jeep, it's a little, theirs is a little different um, because they took advantage of some stuff a little bit differently than everybody else. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So this is the, the list that I got from Bleepin' Jeep. You can see it's all typed out, everything's on here. And I'm gonna, just as you just look at the Nate, it's gonna burn through it really fast. Here we go. Uh, pickup truck, $1,200, front Dana 60, 500, built 14 bolt rear, 500, Dana 60 rebuild kit, everything, 2,700, brake brackets from Rough Stuff, 93.96, eBay high steer arms, 99.99, Rough Stuff U-bolt kit, 148.16, Barnes four wheel drive, uh, 153.90. He had said used leaf springs. The group didn't agree with that, so they charged him $139 each for the leaf springs because they were obviously brand new. Front leaf spring bushings, eBay, $38, Barnes four-wheel drive gasket, or a gusset kit, 13 bucks. Method wheels, $1,176. We're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, Milestar tires, $1,472. Barnes four-wheel drive shock coupes, 80. Uh, dual case, 485. Used uh, transfer case. He had 150, the group didn't agree. They put him up to 250. BDS rear Adelaide, $70, 86 cents. JKS center pins, $14. Rear replacement leaf spring bushings, 6248. Rear shackles, 3390. Barnes four wheel drive U bolt eliminators, 7650. Fox shocks, 23630. Uh, remote reservoir shocks for the front, 41480. Barnes four wheel drive high, heavy duty steering, 27431. Uh, Trail gear hydro assist ram with hoses, 350. Barnes four wheel drive anti wrap bar kit, 11624. eBay transmission cooler, 3975. eBay DIY two and a half inch exhaust, 115 or 15115. eBay muffler, 4250. eBay battery cables, $36. Battery box, winch plate from Barnes, 54 and $57. Uh, used worn winch. He didn't have to put that in there, so we took it out. He had originally put it in there for $200. Uh, tubing, inch and a half tubing, uh, $580. Aluminum radiator with fans, $200. And that got him right around $11,000 to build the vehicle. 11000 I think it was 11700 is where it ended up. So that got him right around that number right there. Then came the deductible items. And this is where Colt tried to play a little fast and loose. So he was able to deduct the, the front locker, that, but he included in the budget. So that was taking off almost $1,000 for that locker. Um, he bought a used axle with a rear locker in it, and he tried to deduct the entire cost of a brand new ARB air locker. 
And although I commend him for trying to play the game, what we did instead is we discounted the cost of that used axle to offset it. Um, he deducted some of his tubing uh, for the roll cage, so that was in here. And then he also, oh, he also tried to deduct the used winch, but he tried to deduct it at the price of a new winch. Very sneaky, that Colt. So we didn't let him do that. And then this is where, if you remember, we talked about the idea of having a uh, non-improving uh, elite sponsor part. Uh, it gets deducted. Um, and Colt tried to argue that method wheels, because he didn't buy bead grips, they should be deducted. And that started a huge argument. I don't even remember how it was finalized, but I think we ended up giving him half of the money for the wheels. Um, and then he was able to sell a few items he had on here. He sold some ballistic wheel spacers. He sold the rear axle, uh, got some scrap metal here and there, uh, sold the steering knuckles. Uh, he really took advantage of the fact that they were allowed to sell the old parts. Uh, so he, he did a lot of there. Um, when it was all said and done, all hashed out, his vehicle came in at $8,800, which for what it is, yes, that is a fair price. Now, if we were to add in, just like Nate, if we're gonna add in everything that we took out that was required by Ultimate Adventure, you know, front and rear locker, winch, uh, the roll cage, that vehicle is actually gonna be closer to the 12, 12, five number, to be honest with you, to get built. Um, it was an incredibly well executed budget on Colt and Bleep and, on, and Matt from Bleep and Jeep uh, uh, Jump Street, right from Jump Street. They had a very, very well planned out budget um, and Colt was very open about what he spent. Um, he just tried to get a little sneaky with the rules, which, hey, those are the rules and that's how it works. He originally was trying to get the truck out the door for seven grand, which felt a little, little touchy, which is why we ended up adding some items back in, which push, pushed him back up to the $8,800 mark, which is where he landed. So now it's time to talk about the most controversial budget of all three competitors, and that is the Rad Charger with Rudy uh, from Rudy's Adventure and Design, his girlfriend Janelle, and Holly uh, from Mischief Maker TV. Now, um, I know there's a lot of people who think that he was uh, treated unfairly, and I can tell you right now, absolutely untrue. Um, the budget is actually, should have, after we reviewed it uh, again, getting ready to make this video, I realized that his budget actually should have been higher, but we're not gonna penalize him because I forgot to add in certain items that he had put on his. So, as I said before, I've built a lot of vehicles, and we asked for his uh, breakdown, and this is what he gave us, just basically a handwritten list. Um, and during the discussion of the other teams with this list, there was a lot of things that they uh, took, uh, basically took exception with. So as an example, uh, on this right here, it says, um, let's see here, uh, uh, re-gear kit, um, $1,000 for gears, install kits, axle shafts, worn freewheel and hubs. That's impossible. There's no way that's a thousand dollars, and I'll tell you why. Um, the master install kit for a Sterling rear axle retail cost is five hundred and thirty-six dollars. The ring and pinion is three hundred and sixty dollars. So you're basically almost at a thousand dollars, and all you've done is re-geared the rear axle. So after many hours of combing through this, the new budget uh, for the Rad Charger was as follows. Uh, purchase of the truck, $2,500. $1,000 worth of tubing for the sliders and the bumpers. Uh, Re-gear axles, front and rear new shafts and hubs, $2,695. To purchase the used axles were $1,000. Tires, $1,500. Now on Rudy's list, he had $800, but what we did was we assessed Colt and Rudy the same price for tires because they were running the exact same tires. So it was like 1,500 bucks. 
Uh, wheels, as I said before, they were used, but the group determined the price for that it was $500. Coilovers for the front was $1,500 for the pair, and that was just determined by a quick internet search for those specific coilovers, the price at a place like AccuTune Off-Road that sells them with springs, with DSC adjusters, because those were some nice coilovers. Uh, leaves for the rear, $250. Rear shocks, $600. Uh, the EFI was valued at $900. Uh, drive shafts were originally valued less, but then they were, came up to $1,300. Two used transfer cases, $200. All the Barnes four-wheel drive parts to make it all work, $1,400. The hydro assist was $500. Headers, $289. Wheel spacers, $200. Fuel pump and fuel lines for the EFI, $500. Um, now, Rudy bought a used motor, which was fine. And it came with cam, valve springs, intake. I think it came with a distributor, a couple other items. Um, after researching that motor, as I said before, no one was allowed to say free parts. That motor locally to us, a, a junkyard um, a Dodge 360 is about $500. So we put a $500 amount on that. Off-road designs, uh, shifters and the doubler, $1,400. Steering shafts, $100. Bucks. Exhaust, $300. Limit straps, $150. For a total price of $19,534, which is what he was assigned on the, uh, on the episode. But then what happened was we came back and we started looking through some of the budget and we missed a few of things. Well, not we, it was the competitors who were supposed to see these things. The competitors missed some things like um, engine gasket kit, paint, miscellaneous nuts and bolts, uh, brake lines, lug nuts, uh, interior. All these things should have been added in and that was almost an additional, almost an additional 1500 bucks to be honest with you. Um, Rudy also sold some items. So he said he sold the bumpers for $150, sold the center console for $100, um, but someone pointed out there was still a center console in the rig, so I don't know where the center console went, but they came back and sold the original axle tires and wheels for $800. Um, and so he would have dropped about $1,000 off of that uh, price, but a lot of these things would have made it all up in, in the end. Um, so the $19,534, that's a very fair budget for that vehicle. Um, now, if you're honest with yourself and you add in all the items that were taken off for Ultimate Adventure, uh, yeah, that's a $25,000 vehicle all day long, and that's what it would cost to build that vehicle. It's a beautiful Ram Charger, it really is. There's a lot of work in that truck, and no one charged labor for any of this. This is all just parts. So hopefully that clears up how the budgets were assigned for each vehicle, how it penalized them in their votes, or benefited them in their votes, and how it moved forward during the competition. Now at the same time, you could have changed all of this. Everyone who voted, everyone who's watching these, watching the videos, was able to go onto Onyx Off Road and vote. A thousand votes is not hard to make up in one day if you have a thousand people voting for you. And people were allowed to vote more than once. So the challenges were more there to basically just incentivize the competitors to try a little harder, have a little bit of fun, and most importantly, make some good TV. So there you go. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments below uh, if you feel the budget was assigned correctly. Let me know what you think. Uh, uh, since there's such a hot topic on these challenges, what would you like to see the competitors do next year? I'm sure we'll be talking with Onyx shortly about how we're going to change this, uh, this series up. We can't do the same thing every year. So uh, what competitions would you have them do? And how would you ensure that it's fair for all the challengers? Let me know in the comments below. We'll talk to you soon.